Take the heat, get the he fuck out of the kitchen. Blasting to you straight out of Las Vegas, Nevada, it is the curvaceous bounty of Sin City, starring Sierra, Sweet Cheeks, Glitz, and Toxic. Good evening, Las Vegas, and people around the world, and all you motherfuckers in Florida. Florida? I don't know. You think them old motherfuckers in Florida listen to us? Uh, we might you know, be their guilty pleasure. You know what? I actually think uh, the Cocoa Beach Bashers probably listen to us. So yeah, you're I hear, right. I hear those are some crazy motherfuckers. Well, there's a few of those at the bash this year at Well Rounded. The Cocoa Beachers? Yes. or Yeah. Yeah. Not, I... not, not the retirees. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking I want to do... I want to do the Cocoa Beach Bash, but that's going to mean I can't do the Vegas Bash. So I'm going to like plan these can't things. Can we just so, take a year off and just do all the bashes across the country? As soon as we can find a sugar daddy to pay for it. Sugar daddy, wanted. So here's what I think I'm going to do. Next year, I think I'm going to do the bash as a basher. Take my Vegas. week of vacation, okay. sleep in, get drunk, party. Hang out at the pool all day. Get sunburned at the pool. Yeah, like I'm I'm yeah. planning on doing like the whole beach, and then you'll the get whole bash thing. A couple days after it's over. Everyone does. I do every year. I did it this year. Got sick as hell Tuesday. Everyone does. It seemed like my Facebook exploded with everybody. Wednesday, I got just, sick. Just, oh, my nose and I'm throwing up and I can't get it. It was like everybody yep, got sick. Everybody. And, and that's because of the uh, soup that we all swim in um <laughs> and then the year after that i'm trying to save up my money to go to this resort in jamaica it is this all-inclusive clothing optional resort oh yeah i and this place is so inclusive it's like if i asked the tiki dude to bring me a drink and stick it in my butt crack he would bring me a drink and stick it in my butt crack and i'm not allowed to tip him and I'm, i bet he's a really good looking tiki dude with and he's naked Probably. Or at least with a tiny little loincloth on. Oh, I love this. The idea. only thing that I'm dreading is that, uh, is breakfasts is there because Why? all of the restaurants are also clothing optional in the resort. So you go in and you sit down and you're having your eggs and bacon and, you know, maybe some, you know, crazy Jamaican breakfast dish and some old dude with his floppy cock it just comes walking right past you. But and let, so it's just, you know, let me tell you what distracting else distracting me from the sausage on my plate. When I went to Jamaica, in the, every place that there was to have breakfast, was open air you know like on a patio or whatever mm -hmm. so you would be sitting having your breakfast and these freaking birds would just come and eat out of your bread basket now they come nibble on your nipples <laughs> in jamaica if you ain't wearing no clothes now See, what that's are you gonna my, do about that that's my only well, thing it's clothing optional so you could right. wear a light see-through throw darling flowy thingy yes, yeah darling. something yeah i don't know well, I, I i'd save my nips from being nipped i'll tell you well i'm gonna have to get like spf 7500 for my nipples <laughs> and my ass cheeks because they have never seen the light but of day. wait a second my question is like you're such a uh, leather bottom I wonder if you'd be protected from the sun. No, you know, I, I don't think that counts as sun, sun oh exposure. Oh my God, though, counts. but you could get your ass beat. I can. And it's never red. <laughs> so, like, it might can get a little you get pink. Sunburned and it'd be hot and never red. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I don't tan very Let's well. Experiment. I have a tan. In case none of you knew, I actually have a tan. Look, I have tan lines. Oh, please. Look at how tan I am. At our last photo shirt, which was way at the beginning of the summer before I even got all this, I am darker than every one of you. Yeah, but th you can see how tan I am, and I'm still <laughs> white as a ghost. I'm tan. Wait a minute. You Hello. should see my butt cheeks. Yeah. My butt cheeks are so white, they have been mistaken for white underwear before. That's that is not a lie. That's a real story. Ask Alexia. Tell us the story. Come on. So Alexia your and I, on, your used, white underwear ass. Alexia and I used to go to this little church in town together, and I was standing outside. This was back when I smoked, and I was having a cigarette. And I was wearing a very nice little white dress on, and I was having a cigarette. And you know, my mom was there, and my sister was there, and Alexia was walking up behind me, and a gust of wind came and whoop, poofed my skirt right up. I did not have underwear on. And Alexia was like, oh, my God, I can't believe you have white underwear on. I'm like, I don't have underwear on. And she said, your ass is so white, it looks like cotton. Oh, like, my God. That's how white my ass is. It looks like cotton. And even after she's beat heavily with lots of whips and leather 
it's still white. Hot as fuck to the touch, but still white. I, it just amazes me when it I think about your It paints up sometimes. Well, it didn't that one night. Yeah, no, it didn't that one night. No, the one night that it's I It's been seen a while, it. though, so I might get really oh, pink the next well, let's time. Get, just make sure I'm invited when it happens. Because well, like, see, I think so... the power exchange is closed, and I haven't been down there, and I can't find anything online. I thought that they And when you call the phone number, it still rings as if it was the old power exchange, but no one ever answers the phone. Well, I think the, the guy sold it. Yeah. I mean, he still owns this thing out in California, I think, and he sold the one here. Right. And I, we just don't know who it's sold to or what's going on. I have no Our idea. Our guest coming in the show in a little bit may have some of those answers. She may. We'll she see. May. We're going to have our very own lovely and local Desiree But if she Divine doesn't, in. I need to find a, another public, yeah, we need to find publicly a, private Well, I'll dungeon. tell you what I have. I do have a lady, good friend of mine, who has a swinger house with glory holes and a twister um, room. And we, and yeah, and in fact, but we it, do a lot of shooting there. But it doesn't have a St. Andrew's cross or a spanking bench. Can or... we bring a, do, could we buy like, a, or can we bring like, you know, portable ones? Oh, she does have a chair. This big old chair thing. Uh, Can we bring portable ones? Maybe I'll have... I, I know a carpenter. Maybe why I'll have you some just, stuff made. Why don't you just have your own... Well, there's so many people in your house. But Callie Guy's house here, you could make a dungeon room. No, because eventually we're going to rent that out, turn gotcha. it into an investment property, something. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you just need to rent a garage and make a dungeon. <laughs> I don't know. I need to. I need that to find other people. That dungeon at the power people. exchange was very cool, though. It was very it cool, was very and cool. it was nice to have access to it anytime you needed it. That's one of the problems with personal dungeons. When somebody personal has a dungeon, maybe they'll let their friends come over, but they're not just going to let the general public. And I don't need a full dungeon in my house somewhere. Maybe like a fold-out one. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Okay, we're just. I'm just getting a note that. Our guest seems to be having the stomach flu. Uh oh. So it may be the two of us tonight, girlfriend. We can do this. I know. We've done it before. Yeah, let me see. I'm just telling her whatever's good for her. It, it's the it's oh, the yeah. BF um saying mm. I'm at this door. She's she did she doesn't want to tell us she's sick, so he told us she's sick for her kind of thing. That's funny. <laughs> so um that's way okay. Way, way okay. All right. So, you know, let me talk about something kind of, kind of, I don't know, off the cuff here. A friend of mine, you know her, um, her father passed away three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the father is in his 90s. Okay. Okay. Lived a very good long life. Yeah. Well, what had happened is he had had a fall. And then after the fall, which happens with so many old people, they have a fall and they never recover from that fall. Okay. He had broke his hips, his femur. I mean, it was a mess. Wow. So, um, they have been holding his body and won't cremate it. The funeral is this Wednesday because they're investigating. Okay, why is there an autopsy and an investigation on a 94-year-old man? Okay. Well, was he living what... alone or no. in a home? No, here's what happened. Okay. Here's what I find out today. Apparently in the state of Nevada, if an elderly person dies of a fall, there is an investigation about elderly abuse. Right. Now, um, they had ha been having social services or represented from Medicaid or Medicare, whatever it is, out there because they were bringing something to help bathe him and stuff, okay, prior to him hurting. And he was still tr tr walking, you know, and they just, my friend, they just keep pounding, pounding, pounding her. How did he fall? How She goes, I was asleep. Like he fell during the night. I was asleep. He woke up. She, I... Yeah. She says, I think that he tried to brace himself on the chair and the chair slipped from out from under him. But I don't know that for a fact. So she's, it's been three weeks since she died. She's having a hard time for the state to say, go ahead and cremate him. And the mother's having a cow because they, they have to do an autopsy. And I just, I just think, and all that happened was what he really died of was heart failure. So if the doctor would have put heart failure on the, uh, instead of died of a fall, right, it would have eliminated all this headache. I understand that there's elderly abuse, but this is a headache, you know? It, it is, but it ensures that, so... Here's here's my thing. I know someone who was caring for an elderly person and they died of uh, the official documents is heart failure. But there are a lot of us who believe that it was related to a fall that was caused by mismanagement uh, uh, the month prior. Were they like in a uh, home or a place? Or no, they, they were, were in their own home. They were in their own home okay. with 
private care providers not provided by the state. Right. Okay. Paid by the by the family and the insurance. And yeah. there was no family, so it was oh. it was you know just people who knew her. Okay. Anyway, so it was never investigated, and there's a lot of people, including myself, who believe that it was due to negligence and that the person who was negligently responsible should have been called to court for that. Right. Um, but nothing happened of it. There's nothing we can do about it now because this was like 10 years ago. Um, but it's just super crazy because 10 years ago, there was none of this investigation. An old person died, an old person died. Doesn't matter what they died from. Who cares? Who gives a shit? Right. Come to find out so many of these old people who are dying are dying because people don't care about what they're doing and they'll drop an old person or they'll, you know, move them the wrong way. Uh, you know, whatever, they, they're dying of heart failure, but what they're dying from is a punctured lung from a broken rib that no one knew about because nobody reported the fall or nobody talked yeah. about how to properly carry an old person or anything like that. Now, here's my opinion. Okay, give me that because I, I, I'm curious here. My opinion is, is if this guy was 90 years old, not capable of caring for himself, pissing on himself, shitting on himself, can't get out of bed and can't move... Why are we continuing him to let have this? Why are we allowing him to continue with this terrible life? If your dog was pissing on himself, shitting on himself, couldn't get out of bed and couldn't move, you'd take him to the vet and you'd have him put down because it's inhumane to let a living creature live and suffer that way. Right. And and what, you know, this guy, like before he had the fall, he, he was walking obviously, cause he got out of bed. He was sitting up. He'd watch his TV. He loved to watch golf. He watched the golf can channel 24 hours a day, ate his food. You know what I mean? I mean, mm -hmm. he needed help and he needed somebody there and he was a little, you know, getting a little paranoid, but he was a little, functioning adult he wasn't like vegetable material mm -hmm. till after the fall right and then after the fall at one point do we you know continue Damn. just well, allowing him to suffer like you just let him suffer well, you know what that's oh we exactly gave him pain meds uh that doesn't make any difference what kind of quality was he getting an erection regularly was he having fun was he laughing was he joking was he stroking himself off does was he, he even sticking his know thumb up his existing? butt yes does he even know anymore maybe there's cognitive brain function happening up there but it's not firing right, so he doesn't really understand. He knows I'm breathing and there's light coming on me and people in the room. But does he really understand that he's alive or does he think he's in some weird, crazy ass well, and finally, after LSD this induced whole dream? Thing, you know, the, they, first they thought it was his hip, just his hip. Then and further, they're like, it was his hip and his femur and his leg. I mean, it was just a. And the doctor finally said, we need to take him to hospice because he won't survive a surgery. And because and he can't get up and walk to rehab after you need to do. So he can't survive surgery. He can't do rehab. So he gets to sit around in a bed, wait to doped die. up with a broken femur and a broken hip and just wait to die. That's it. You know what I told my friend? I said, you find a nurse and you slip her a hundred dollar bill and you tell her to give him a little extra morphine. And he's done. I mean, seriously, I wasn't being brutal. I was like, he's never coming home. No, I want... I want, seriously, in my medical power of attorney, which I'm eventually going I'm to get done. Over. We have no guests because I keep looking at you too. So, okay. can we do that? Yeah, that works. <laughs> so I thoroughly believe that I should be allowed to put in my medical power of attorney if I am shitting on myself, pissing on myself, and can no longer. Can you? No, you cannot ask someone to kill you. It is illegal. It is illegal to ask someone to end your life for you. Did you watch that movie that was on HBO not too long ago? Well, a couple of years. About Kevorkian, Jack Kevorkian? Yeah, no, it's still... I know it is. Uh, but... Medically assisted suicide is still very illegal because it's considered murder. Even though I've said, listen, this is what I want. Right. I'm just saying, folks, we treat our pets with more humanity than we treat our elderly. Okay. I'm, I'm just telling you. I don't, I would never, ever want anyone in my family to suffer for days at a time, let alone weeks and years at a time where they have no higher brain function anymore. They, they're, they've regressed to the point where they're, you know, barely two years old. They're barely functioning. They don't visit them just to satisfy yourself because you're not doing anything. Oh, fuck, they don't even know who the they hell you are anymore. No, I agree. There, there, there needs to be, what? you know. Oh, I need to turn that mic on. Oh, I'm sorry. There needs to be, um. Something. I don't know what the answer is because our elderly do need to be protected. But Well, and I think that if, if when we are in a sound mind and body, we put in our living will, living trust, 
whatever thing of whatever. As a matter of fact, I want to. There's a guy I want to get on to talk about all this. Let's do that. That'd be interesting. I want to be able to say, look, if if A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H are all checked off on this list, just stick me with the same shit you put my dog down with two weeks ago, <laughs> because I don't want to live. I don't. I don't want this vessel that contains my immortal soul to continue rotting on Earth. Right. Let's just end it. Ship me off to Tennessee to the CSI school, and I'm good. See, I want to go out to uh, UCLA or U of M Medical School and let them study me. If they can learn something. No, I want to go to C- uh, Tennessee's CSI school because they're going to take your body and they're going to pretend you're a murder victim See. and and put you out in a field. I, I was hoping and... they would learn something from my fatness. You well, know? No, they'll learn how your how your body decomposes in conditions as opposed People, to another body. This is the difference body. between the geek and the non-geek. She wants hers to go to science school. I want mine to be studied for other people. <laughs> no, I, I want to become part of somebody's experiment where they go, that, that is what a fat ass looks like after three weeks in a plastic bag buried under three feet of dirt. That's what it looks Everything like, Everything will be gone except your tits. <laughs> No, I think my tits would be the first to go because they the did a thing on CSI about the the farm. They call right. it some kind of farm, the, the body co- farm. Body farm. That's mm-hmm. it. Um, but you know what? I here's my big thing about dying. When I was getting divorced, okay, um, I was cleaning out the bottom of a closet, okay, <laughs> and all of a sudden I got hysterical, and my niece was there, and I'm like, Oh my God, I don't have anybody to tell this to. Please let me tell you what I want you to do with my body when I die because I don't have nobody else to tell this to. Okay, because that's usually what you tell a spouse, okay? Right. Now I'm not hysterical about that anymore. But I don't want, and I come from back east, back Michigan, where they lay the bodies out for three days. All the Polish grandmas come and kiss the body and (laughs) fuck that. In fact, even when I go to those funerals, when I have to go to a family, I, first of all, I don't believe that that's the person in that coffin, okay? So I always stand way back, way back. I don't need to go to the coffin and look at the body. I'll visit the family and I'm done. But my, I don't want anybody laying my ass out for my friends to come by and go, oh, doesn't she look really good? Because I'm fucking dead. I won't look good. I'm not doing that. I'm just No, I don't want you to do I'm that. I'm bringing a Sharpie marker to write on your tits. That's what I'm going to be like. You know what? Don't worry. Peace in the anybody, afterlife. I, promise me, friend. Anybody tries to lay my body out like that, it's somebody not, needs to fight for it me. Can't, it can't happen. It's terrible. No, I, I don't want that either. I don't think and people you know what? do that much anymore. And I don't want a sad-ass funeral. I want all my favorite music played. I want all my favorite drinks served. I want somebody to serve some fucking food. And I want everybody... I want it to be just like you the know, way Mike's Memorial was. I was just going to say, was. Mike's Memorial, what, there was very few tears, a lot of laughs, a lot of good time. A lot of stories being told. I mean, and there were so many different clicks in the room. And I was, I was wandering because I was kind of playing liaison for alexia so i was wandering between the clicks and you would hear so there's you know the 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 religious people that we were all involved in telling stories about how you know amazing he was for alexia and how he changed her life spiritually and blah 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 and then you wander over here and it's all the it's all the nerds and the gamers and talking about you know past campaigns and the crazy shit he used to do and the games he used to make up on the fly and, and the other corner and then you go to and the porn stars <laughs> well and then there's then there's the the yeah, stage boy. hands who are all talking oh, yeah. about how what an amazing you know supervisor he was how great he was how you know he never he always fought for the guys he was working for and you know blah 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 yeah then the family's there and they're talking about you know that that time back when he was wild young and crazy and went to you know crazy clothing optional pool parties where people were seen each other in many years yes reconnected there too and that's what i want i want someone to i want to wander around my own memorial service as a ghost and i want to hear all the different people mingling and telling stories and oh did you ever hear about the one time that uh sierra passed out in a cement flower bed outside that strip club no tell me all about it oh there was vomit <laughs> rainbows and blah 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 and i'm gonna and... definitely tell the letter bo- leather bottom story for you well, you're gonna be gone long before i am i hope so i hope so yeah because I I'm plan on much older than you. I'm plan on living to be 97. 97. You 97. That? Okay. Because at the the year I turn 97 years old is about in the July of that year will be the United States of America's tricentennial. So if the U.S. of A is still around, 
for 300 years, I want to be there to celebrate it. And okay. I'm going to be 97 years old. And you know what? At that point, I'm not going to care. So I'll have a cigar in one hand. <laughs> I'll have a big ass glass of some sort of bourbon or whiskey or scotch. And I'm just going to be puffing away with my great grandkids going. Granny is one crazy motherfucker. I'm telling you. And that's exactly going to be Where'd the way I want to go. 50? I'm telling you, when you hit 50, you start really thinking about your own mortality. And I've talked to a lot of people over 50. And it's not like you're ready to die, but it's kind of like, you know what? I'm on the short end of the stick here. I mean, because very few people make it to 100. Right. So, you know, you're on the downslide and you don't know when that might come. And then what's, yeah. what's sad is when people around you start people dying. you know pass away you yeah know? Uh, that, that makes it really tough yeah that throws you for a loop when suddenly yeah. everybody you know starts kicking the bucket and you're like what the fuck am i doing like i'm gonna die <laughs> you know what i went and seen this week at the two dollar movie theater hmm. i went and seen heaven is for real have you heard any stories about this thing? I've heard the stories about the little boy who died and went to heaven and came back with all these stories. And I think it's a lovely and inspirational book and a lovely and inspirational story, uh, but it's not for me. Well, and, and it may not be for a lot of people, right. but there's a lot of stuff in there that makes you think. It you does. Know, I had, when my friend, um, a very, very close friend of mine passed away, um, somebody had recommended that book for me. And I didn't go buy the book, I, but I got online and did some research about it. And I watched some interviews with the father and the little boy and um, just some very interesting things. I don't know if anybody knows about it, but, you know, he supposedly he had like emergency appendix and he actually, he didn't, they don't say that he ever died on the table they just say that he had these visions now there's another girl in lithuania did you, you know about her mm -hmm. okay the girl in lithuania when she was four that's how old the boy here from nebraska was um for she started having visions or visits to heaven whatever you want to call them now she came from an atheist family this little boy his father was a pastor so he was indicted with jesus and heaven and stuff she wasn't but um, what's crazy is they kind of compare stories. And, oh, my God, if you ever look it up, this girl, you will not believe the artwork she does. I mean, and she started doing it at six and eight when she got back. And it's pictures of what she supposedly sees. I mean, unbelievable artwork. She's, you know. But anyway, a, a really interesting part of the story that I find very, very interesting is that um, the little boy had a sister. And the mother at some point had a miscarriage, mm -hmm. never told the children. They never talked about it. And the little boy, one day mom's folding the, you know, the laundry and she, he says, I have a sister. She goes, yeah, you have a sister. Casey's your sister. No, I have another sister that died in your tummy. Hmm. And she goes, you know, looks at him and he says, um, and they didn't know it was a girl when the baby died. And so she says, what does he look? What does she look like? She looks like um, Cassie, but with your hair. And um, I just think it's very interesting that this four-year-old, you know, it, it makes you question. I don't know. You know, I want to think there's something after what we have. Um, I want to think that this boy seen what he really seen and the little girl from Lithuania seen what she little uh, seen. I gives me peace. I, I, question. I, would, I would love to believe that it's true. I would love proof. Um, unfortunately for me, I... I have a very logical and analytical mind. And while I do believe in some sort of greater cosmic consciousness, um, I, I also know where a lot of these stories, a lot of people say, oh, we never talked about it in front of them. They never knew. They never knew. They never knew. Except that what we forget is that we did talk about these things in front of them when they were little bitty babies and when they were one and two years old before we believe that children start retaining memories. But that's not true. Uh, children begin retaining memories from the minute they're born. It's whether they can recall those memories. Right. And so... So you think it was like a subconscious thing in I, his anesthetic I, mind during surgery? Yeah. I, I, I believe that there is so much more going on inside our brain than we understand. We that, only that, use 10%. That's yeah. not true. But oh. <laughs> um, okay. we use 100% of our brain. We don't use 100% of it 100% of the time. Oh, I got you. Different portions. Different portions, different portions at different, time. different times right, for different things. Okay. But your brain, we every, you, you use every cell inside your brain. We don't understand what they're all for. Right. But they do fire. We know that there's something going on in there. And so... I believe that our brain is way more capable of retention than we give it credit for. Uh, ask anyone who's got a family member who is 
in the advanced, mid to advanced stages of Alzheimer's where they're telling stories about shit that happened to them when they were like two mm -hmm. that they couldn't have recalled 10 years bef before right. that. Um, Different part of the brain firing. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, those memories are there and like my son will bring up things that I know I've talked about in front of him, but he was so little. I was like, he'll never no, know no. that. He'll never well, remember Well, let me ask it. you a he'll question. Um, I find, you know, if I was to be terminally ill, I, that's what I find peace in. Peace in the faith I was taught as I grew up. Where, where would you find that from? That um, peace? I find that peace in knowing that the electrons... <laughs> the energy in my body, the, the energy, geek and the girl here tonight. The geek and the girl. The energy inside my body can neither be created nor destroyed. It has always existed since the beginning of time. Okay. Which means when I die, that energy that is inside of me does not just pff, disappear. It goes somewhere. Where it goes, I don't know. Where do you maybe, believe it goes? Maybe I don't know. You don't. Okay. I, I don't have an opinion on it. Okay. Um, maybe you know, there's the possibility that that energy, because it's the life force energy. This is all conjecture and blah 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 but right. maybe the life force energy of a human can only be reattracted to another human i i believe that a child doesn't have a soul until they take the first breath of life you until you have breathed life into you you cannot be life you cannot be life okay. i mean that's if you want to go in the biblical sense God tells you that right. I made you out of clay and dirt and pig shit, but you didn't really exist until I breathed the light breath of life into you. Right. Right. So I don't believe a child has a soul until they take their first breath of life. So maybe my energy is floating around right after I die and a baby breathes in and they breathe in my energy oh. and they become maybe me. Reincarnation. Reincarnation. Maybe, maybe I, I get absorbed into that. an oak tree and I spend the rest of my days as a mighty beautiful oak so or the bottom a dog is, turd. My opinion on the whole thing is like, and, and, and I would be okay with any of that. I believe in, I want to say it's God. I want to, you know, um, I believe Jesus lived whatever his capacity was. He was a prophet of some sort, you know, mm -hmm. I was taught he was the son of God and I would be okay coming like being a tree or being brought back but the thing is is that um I guess we'll never know will we no we'll never know and I know that there's a ton of people who come back and said I was in heaven and I saw all these people and blah 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 you know, when my and, friend... and I I understand like I totally get that you really want this to be a spiritual thing and I would never ever take that from you but there is a skeptic inside of me who says, I have to see it to believe it. Well, and that's that's what faith is about. That's when they talk about what faith is. Faith is seeing, not seeing, and still believing. And, I believe uh, that I believe that uh, gravitons are not real energy sources and that gravity is not a real uh, cosmic source. I believe that it's combined sources of other energies that are put together i believe that there are planets out there that i will never ever see but i know they're there because the math tells me it has to be there there is hard physical proof one plus one equals two means so you're saying there's not enough hard evidence for you that god exists right there's not there's there isn't a mathematical equation now. I believe in the Higgs boson, which is the God particle, which is the particle that neither exists and exists always, uh, which is an awesome feat of physics. I believe in the stuff that can be proven to me through a series of facts, um, and those facts have to be repeatable by anyone. Which means if Joe Schmo brings me this thing and he says when you solve this equation it will explain to you why the Higgs boson does what it does and if I can solve it and you can solve it and he could solve it and she right. can solve it's it consistent it's consistent right. and it's proof that makes sense if somebody comes to me and says I died and went to heaven and came back again great bring me 15 more people who had the exact same experience well you did. let me tell you something I when my friend died I was just beside myself I needed to understand it was kind of like I felt like and this was a this was a best friend that I went to high school with we were friends since we were like five years old and um she uh, I needed to understand what was going on so I got online and I read everything I could read about near-death experiences I found this really good website that went down and it said okay if you you know you were a Buddhist and they gave me they gave me stories of Buddhists who had near death experience, atheists, Catholics, bad every faith. They all have very similar, very very, very similar, similar. A lot experiences. Of the same. A lot, a of, lot the same. of the same, but 
nothing exactly the same and completely repeatable from time well, to time. Well, it's not going to be because it's human beings explaining it. So that's, th it's not that's like why a fact. I, right. Yeah. It's not a fact. It's a, it's a matter of opinion expressed from a point of view. The way I look at it, okay. <laughs> and now, if I'm right, I'm right. I'm going to heaven. Absolutely. If I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, I think it's going to be nothing. Well, I, and, it, and it is will be what it is. And I, I live... I live by this, the rule that every religion, you know, espouses, and that's the golden rule, to do unto others. others. Right. Every religion teaches this, is that you should treat others the way you want to be treated, and you should give them, you know, the love and respect that your God tells you you should love and respect them with. Um, unfortunately, I know way too many very religious people who don't follow any of the teachings of their Jesus exactly. Christ or the Bible set forth before them. And so that always makes me really skeptical of very religious people. And they're like, I'm a Christian, but I hate Jews. And it's like, well, yeah, yeah, that's a you little can't much. do that do because... That. First off, Jesus was a Jew. And second <laughs> off, once upon a time, you were a Jew too. Like Jews have been around long before Christians ever were. Yep. And that is not only a historical fact, that is a biblical fact. It says so in the Bible. So whatever. Um, but I never want to negate somebody's religious experience or spiritual experience. I've had religious experiences. I've, I've been touched by the divine. I have had prayers come true. I've had... I have, you know, done things to help other people to cause miracles to happen. I've seen that happen. Right. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm saying we can't say for sure who's right and wrong. You're right. And absolutely. And you got to choose you, to believe what you choose to believe. If you died and you were dead, like dead, like everyone said, you're fucking dead. Like the doctor said, this motherfucker's dead. And you went up there and you saw a bunch of angels and light and fluffy clouds and gold paved roads. And you came back down and then you were alive. And the doctor said, once upon a time you were dead you and now what? you're that fucking alive. That has happened. I read a book by a woman that that actually happened. In I, fact, they, I, had, I they were rolling her say, to the morgue. Yeah. I would never say you didn't experience that because you did. I don't know what you experienced because I can only say from what you're telling me, right. how your brain processed what you actually experienced is going to be 100% based on what you have to process with. What? And if, if you've been taught from the very beginning of your life that there is this place that you go to when you die, and if you're a good person, you get there. And if you follow a good and godly life, you'll make it there. And if you repent for your sins, by the way, Catholics, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you people. Sin all you want, but if you believe in God, you'll still go to heaven. Well, first, I was raised Catholic, went to Catholic school for 12 years. I never believed I had to go into a little box and tell a priest my sins. And, you know, ask I God had a to problem. forgive you from your sins. I can't see why God would give you rules, let you break them, and still let you into heaven. Like, if your God's going to say, you can't do this. Oh, you did that, but you're really sorry you did it. Okay, you can come on. Well, in. the That's Bible like... says that the only unforgivable sin, the only sin that God will not forgive you for is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And that's almost impossible to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Just saying. I'm bi I used to be a pastor's wife, so I can Bible thump with the best of them. But, you know, I the Catholics teach that to be forgiven, you have to tell your sins to a priest and they have to tell you to do 10 Hail Marys or whatever they freaking tell you to do. Um, I used to get in trouble as a kid going to a Catholic school and refused to go to confession. The nuns would have a heart attack. And I'd say, uh-uh, I'll just tell God my sins and we're all good. And my mother, my mother, thank God, was liberal enough to say that's her choice. You know, if that's what she believes, that's what she believes. Who's getting on? Who's on there yelling at us? So Inkspot says this is a very interesting conversation about death. Yes, we've we've actually experienced a lot of death in our social circle in the last two weeks. There's it, People are dropping like flies. I don't mean to sound like callous about it, but it seems like everybody's got somebody who's died recently. Callie Guy says, my definition of faith is the decision to believe in something for which there is no evidence or which is contrary to the existing evidence. In the long human history of various methods to decide methods to decide what is factually true or not true, faith, as opposed to the scientific method, has a very high failure rate. And he's he's true about that. Um I happen to know that Cali guy is a devout atheist, but he does not discount the fact that there may be something higher. Right. If you can bring him proof, right? If you can bring him factual, uncontroversial truth and set it down before him and say, there, this is truth. 
he would believe it. And I would too. You know, it makes me... I, I have more faith in something a little bit higher than myself. I I don't know if I would call it God per se or goddess or, you know, Buddha or, or anything. Right, a spirit of power. I, I believe in the energy of the universe and that's so new age and hippie and that is you know so what? not what but, I am. See, I believe that the energy of the universe may well be God. It may well be. You know, and I believe, and I, and I actually have a kind of a belief that, you know, um, if you believe in Buddha, if you believe in, um, you know, God, if you believe in Jesus, if you believe in Krishna, whatever it is, it's all really the same power. Ultimately. I believe that. I I believe believe that really it's all the same power. It's all the good. It's all what we should strive to be. In a house of many mansions, there are many, in a, in a, in a mansion of many houses, there are many rooms to live in. Exactly. So that, that you know, I just happen to be born, raised Christian, but I don't believe that my God is any better than, say, Buddha or somebody else's or, or what you raised, believe. You know. I was raised to believe that the power of Budweiser and Bud would get you through <laughs> anything. Yeah, the Bud does it for me. <laughs> Not the Budweiser. <laughs> Oh, on that note, we're going to take, take a, a little break. break. Yeah. You know what? If you are in chat with us tonight, um, it is Sierra and I you got for the night. Poor little Desiree Devine ain't something not in agreeing with her. But she's going to probably be in maybe next week and, um, and, and drop, a, drop a really big bombshell announcement on us. But if you'd like to see something we'd like to talk, you'd like us to talk about, was there something in the news this week? Do you want our opinion? Um, you drop that into chat and we will be glad to see what our opinion is on those things. Right now, we're going to take a little break. You've been listening to the Curvaceous Bounty of Sin City on VegasAllNetRadio.com. We'll be right back. Uh, if I can ever get this thing to do what it's supposed to do. 